Welcome to Arsenalen, the Swedish Tank Museum. And today it's Volvo Day. I will show you a vehicle, a world unique, very advanced vehicle. Only seven built and out of these seven, there are only three remaining vehicles. So let's have a look. But before we dig into details, I will give you some background and to be able to travel on road and off road had been a big challenge for more than 100 years. And one obstacle, water, for instance, lakes, rivers, etc., have been uh, quite difficult to get through or past them when you are advancing with, with an army. And that is why bridges became very important. And one part to, of the defense was to blow the bridges before the enemy got close to them, and that could delay an advance for hours or even days. And reconnaissance units, they had the task to get deep into the enemy territory to, to try to spot the enemy, but of course undetected. So they needed to use small roads, and often they had to go over small bridges or rivers, etc., to be able to find a way that the enemy wouldn't spot them. And this kind of advance became more and more crucial during the 1930s when the armies got bigger and the motorization became bigger and bigger. You had more vehicles and you could travel faster. So how to cope with that? This little amphibious tank from Soviet Union built in 1935 is one of the first special designed amphibious vehicles that were actually built in a large number. Propulsion with a propeller at the rear and a rudder. So it's a combination of land vehicle and boat. During the Second World War, both Germany and United States designed special amphibious vehicles for reconnaissance units and also for transporting goods. And this German Schwimmwagen is one of them, specially built for that kind of purpose, for wheel drive and with a propeller at the rear for propulsion in the water. And the United States had a similar version, the Ford GPA, with more or less the same features. During the Second World War, they realized that amphibious vehicles were quite important in many roles, both for transporting goods and for reconnaissance, but also to keep the, the advance in army still on foot and, and to be able to continue. And in Sweden, during the 1960s, when the new APC, the 302, and the new tank, the S-tank, when they were designed, they should be amphibious, so they could swim across lakes, etc. And when you have an APC and a tank that is able to cross water, why not also think we need to have perhaps a wheeled vehicle that could do the same? So uh, they did. And during the 1960s in Sweden, Volvo with the famous Mons Hatelius that had been involved in many interesting designs before. He started to look at an amphibious vehicle that could suit the Swedish army. So they took a uh, Laplander, the small 4x4 truck, made it watertight and put a propeller at the rear and they did a lot of tests with that. And even if the vehicle itself was not that special, uh, very good and it uh, actually it went down to the bottom several times, they realized that hmm, we have learned a lot from this. So these tries, they were not in vain. When they started to design the new generation, the next generation for the 1970s, they used the knowledge, the experience from these tests with the Laplander and put them into the next vehicle that should be the next generation the 4x4 C303 and the 6x6 304. 
So the basic idea was to develop a standard vehicle 4x4 and 6x6 that could be used in many different roles. They had a standard version and beside that a lot of special equipped vehicles for radio, transporting wounded, etc. And some of these vehicles made in the 1970s, they are still in use in the Swedish army today. But they also studied a little bigger vehicle that could transport half a platoon. And this vehicle became, well, the most extraordinary, the most advanced and most fascinating vehicle that Volvo ever produced. It's an eight-wheeled vehicle with steering on the two front axles and the space for half a platoon in the rear. Unfortunately, only one prototype was built and I realized, no, uh, we canceled that pro project. But that it had fantastic cross-country performance. And sadly, this only prototype of this special vehicle, it was scrapped. So it's no longer with us. So the eight-wheeled monster is gone, but Something that did survive is this, the amphibious vehicle that Volvo made. Two prototypes were built and five pre-production vehicles. And this is one of the five pre-production vehicles. Out of these seven vehicles in total, only three remaining examples in the world. We have two of them in our collection and the third one is in private hands somewhere in the world. It was sold to Norway and then later I think it went to New Zealand or something. So um, today I'm, I'm not sure where it is. So what is this? Well, this is the basic C304, the 6x6 vehicle that they have modified and made it able to swim. And um, since it's a pre-production vehicle, it has a lot of differences from the ones that were later produced. And one example is um, the door locks and the keys. Um, they actually come from a Volkswagen bus from late 1960s. And if you compare this vehicle with the standard vehicles that were later built, there are many things that are related, but this one have a special features that we will point out. The vehicle has been made watertight with a belly plate underneath and the engine is now in a separate engine bay inside the vehicle. The air from the cooling system and the exhaust goes up through the roof where the exhaust system is located. A normal standard vehicle is they have the exhaust underneath. And to make the vehicle watertight all the doors they have extra hinges so you can lock the secure the door and make it more watertight than it normally is and another preparation is to cover the air inlet for the radiator and for the, for the engine with this hatch that you put here and on the inside you open up two lids to get the air ventilation for the engine coming from the roof. And there is openings beside the driver so you get the air that direction instead and up through the roof. In an amphibious vehicle there is always the risk of water coming in in one way or another. So there is an electric bilge pump in the engine bay. And if that shouldn't be enough, there is a manual one that can be operated by hand from one of the passengers. And the water comes out from the automatic one and from the hand pump one. When driving in water to prevent water from coming into the axles, the transfer case and the winch, there is a system with overpressure. So you fill them with, with air so the water won't le leak into the, this 
crucial components. And if there should be a fire in the engine bay, there are two red tubes, which are the fire extinguisher. So you just push the button on top and you have the bottles at the rear. Since this sometimes is a boat, you need to have some marine equipment like life vests and a few other things that could be quite useful if you get stuck out in the water or um, engine problems or whatever. And of course, there is the marine parking brake. The propulsion in the water is the interesting part and there is a hydrojet system in the rear that is propelled from the transfer case under the vehicle. And normally there's the location for the petrol tank. So in this case, they had to move the petrol tank up to the side of the body. The controls for the driver is basically the same as in the series production, the C3 or 3 and 3 or 4, even if it, they have used different components. It doesn't look like a standard vehicle, but the principle is the same apart from the things that you need for driving in water. And to use it in water, you use this lever for the hydrojet system. So this is for forward driving and reverse when you close the hatches back there and the water goes forward instead. So this is for the hydrojet system. When driving in water, normally you use the steering wheel and the wheels as rudders and that makes easy turns. But if you would like to do sharp turns, you can also use this one and by changing the direction of the water flow, you get a very narrow turn left or right. And getting out of the water, you use the 6x6 drive on the wheels together with this and all of a sudden you are up on the ground again. The maximum speed in water is about 5 knots. But I made two prototypes and then a slightly different version, this one and another four of the pre-production. But it never went further than that. Because the army had um, budget cuts during the 1970s and this project was cancelled. So this is what's left of a very special, unique, advanced vehicle. And we think it's quite important, even if it never went into production, it's important to show the public what they did as part of the development during this period of time. So this was the Volvo Amphibious Tang Bill 12. And if you like our films, please subscribe and hit the like button. So uh, see you next time.